Thus, whether psychological observation is more advantageous or disadvantageous to man may remain undecided. What is certain, however, is that it is necessary, because science cannot dispense with it. Science, however, knows no regard for final objectives, just as nature knows nothing of it. But, as the latter occasionally brings into existence things of the greatest appropriateness and usefulness without having willed them, so genuine science, as the imitation of nature in concepts, will also occasionally, indeed frequently, promote the well-being of mankind and achieve what is appropriate and useful, but likewise without having willed it. He who finds the breath of such a way of thinking too wintry for him perhaps has merely too little fire in him. If he cares to look around him, however, he will perceive illnesses that require ice packs, and people so compounded together of fire and spirit they are hard put to it to find air cold and cutting enough for them. Moreover, just as individuals and nations too much given to seriousness have a need of frivolity, just as others too excitable and emotional require from time to time the pressure of a heavy burden, if they are to stay healthy. Ought we, the more spiritual men of an age which is visibly becoming more and more ignited, not to seize hold on every means there is of extinguishing and cooling, so that we can remain at least as steady, inoffensive, and moderate as we still are? and thus perhaps one day be able to serve this age as its mirror and self-reflection.